Hi, my name's Rob Hunter. I'm making a video following my search for one of Australia's greatest national treasures. The problem is, nobody seems to know what I'm talking about. It's frustrating. Some people just don't appreciate culture. Or being yelled at. Weirdos. But then I met Gerald. He wasn't helpful at first either, but then I offered him a lot of money. That was the key. And luckily he had just what I needed. He even threw in a hammer that he said was magic. So I made a booth, gathered a huge group of people, and now it's time to present my amazing discovery. <clears throat> Gather round, ladies and gentlemen, as I... Rob Hunter. Rob Hunter, reveal one of Australia's greatest creations. Behold! The Murray-Darling Basin. OK, now don't crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Form an orderly queue and have your photo with the basin for just $5. And uh, don't forget your free T-shirt. That's also only $5. Nothing, moron. It's pronounced Rob. Why do people keep getting that wrong? What on earth are you talking about? The Murray-Darling Basin. The Murray-Darling Basin is Australia's most important water catchment. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's, uh, it's quite good. Over two million people live in it. Really? This is a rusty old sink. I think you'll find that's wrong. I uh, have got the receipt to prove it right here. Yeah, look at that. Purchase. One rusty sink, no refunds. Well, what am I going to do? i got all these t-shirts made. I made a booth. Hey, kid, do you want to buy this thing? I'll throw in this hammer. Why are you running? Country. This is the southern end of the Great Dividing Range. These mountains go all the way from Victoria straight up to Queensland and they form the eastern edge of the Murray-Darling Basin. You know, it's views like these that inspired Banjo Patterson. Banjo Patterson? How did I get here? Snow melt and rainfall flow into the basin, forming rivers and streams, including the mighty Murray, one of the two biggest rivers in the Murray-Darling Basin. Can you guess the other one, Rob? Darling. What did you call me? The Murray-Darling Basin spans four states, one territory and two time zones. And if you were to walk, for 12 hours a day, it would take you an entire month to get from one corner to the other. Pick up, pick up. Hello, police. Uh, what seems to be the problem? Yeah, hi, look, you've got to help me. I've been kidnapped by this crazy woman and she's forcing me to learn. Right, uh, now just stay calm, sir. Now tell me where you are. Um, great driving range? Where they make banjos. Whereabouts? On the top, I think. The snowy bit. All right, now just stay calm. Now, you said that this woman is, is forcing you to learn? Yeah, it's horrible. Right. Well, is any of this sinking in? How did you do that? Come on, Rob. Still plenty to see. Well, you, well, wait, are you going to kill me and bury me on this mountain? Of course not, Rob. Don't be ridiculous. I didn't bring a shovel. <laughs> Lake Mungo, part of the World Heritage listed Willandra Lakes region. Aboriginal people have been living in the Murray-Darling Basin for 45,000 years and still today they follow in their ancestors' footsteps. 
The shores of this lake were once prowled by megafauna. Three metre tall kangaroos, savage striking birds, and giant, bloodthirsty, meat-eating wombats. <laughs> dried up, so did life. Luckily, though, we can still look back thanks to the millions of fossils just waiting to be discovered in the lake bed. <laughs> Rob! Rob! Huh. Are you okay? Oh, oh thank goodness. Oh, you're, not a, you're not a giant wombat. You probably hear that all the time. You've had too much sun. Here, drink. I'll wake up. Oh, please wake up. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm in a swamp. A swamp? You wash your mouth out. Oh, and my good shirt. Well, the instructions say not to get crud in the pockets. Rob, you are lucky enough to be in Hatter Lakes. These wetlands are shaded by giant river red gum trees that are hundreds of years old. And for thousands of years, they've provided for Aboriginal cultural practices. Nowadays, there's this camping, there's fishing, there's canoeing. Yeah, but no reception. Why is everything flooded? Well, flooding ensures the survival of these wetlands. You see, when the river rises and flows into the wetlands and floodplains, life flourishes. And then when the water recedes, it takes with it nutrients and other tiny little baby spawnlings back into the river. This cycle of flooding and drought is, is natural Well, you have a drought. Well, surely drought's not a good thing. Well, not for everybody, no. But for the over 30,000 wetlands in the basin, this cycle of flooding and drying out is essential. And it creates breeding grounds for endangered native fish and over 200 bird species, some of which have flown here from as far away as Siberia. Here, take a look at that beauty. Wombat. No, no, a wombok. Rob, wombok. It's a it's Chinese cabbage. <laughs> See, it's not just the landscape that's diverse in the basin, but also the variety of produce that's farmed here. Okay. So, what else is farmed in the basin? Rob, that would literally take me hours to tell you. All right, don't worry about it. One third of Australia's food comes from the basin. All sorts of vegetables, dairy, meat, plus most of Australia's rice, wheat, and various other crops. Cotton is widespread up here in the north, and the fruit, oh, the fruit is divine. So, I guess you could say the basin is very fruitful and has cabbages. Well, I guess you could say that, yeah. Look. All this prosperity has one thing in common. One thing that makes it all possible. Love. Water. Water is what I said. Ugh, come on. <sighs> Irrigation is our way of harnessing nature in order to provide water for farming. See, over the past hundred years, we've, we've built dams and weirs to irrigate thousands of acres. This, combined with the hard work of our farmers, has helped turn the Murray-Darling Basin into Australia's food bowl. So, where are we off to next? Uh, and is it going to hurt? Well, we've almost followed the water right across the basin, from the snow to the desert, from, from farmlands to wetlands. But there's still one more spot we need to visit. Where does all the water finally end up? swim? Yeah, just in time too. It was nearly dry. Rob, you have just climbed out of the Coorong, where the mighty Murray River meets the sea. And just like you, it's a little salty. Sorry, it's just fish pants. We're currently walking along a barrage, one of five actually, and it's here to stop the salt water from the Coorong mixing with the fresh water of the basin. And that means that we... We can use all this fresh water. That's right, Rob. 
for drinking, farming, and some pretty good fishing. Now, we use water to help communities grow, but the one trade-off is that we've upset nature's balance. I guess we can't have our fish and eat it too. Well, you can, but you just have to manage the water properly so that everybody gets their fair share. Plants, animals, and people. at the very least that you now see that the Murray-Darling Basin isn't a giant sink. Ah, uh, yes. No, that was a little bit uh, ridiculously stupid of me, but uh, I know better now. Without the rivers, the communities, the agriculture and the environment of the basin just wouldn't survive. And without the basin, Australia would be a very different place. But every day, new technology, better research and cooperation helps reset the balance. I, uh, I also know that that the basin contains one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. OK! All right, so it's obvious that the basin is important to everybody in Australia and water ties it all together. All right, good. Well, wait. How do I get home? Oh, yeah, that's my bad. Um, OK, how about this? Close your eyes. Great. And whisper, there's no place like home. There's no, no place, place like, like home. Good. There's, There's no, no place, place like, like home. home. Keep your eyes closed. There's no place like home. No peeking. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Hello? Hello? Gerald! <laughs> 